So I uh, want to welcome everybody to this last instructional session for this year's Winter Offensive Online. And we've got Tebow on the line because Tebow is probably the world's expert on some of the long campaigns in great campaigns. I know he really prefers those. And some of these long campaigns can be pretty intimidating. And one of the dangers is you sink a whole bunch of time into playing one of these campaigns only to realize you took didn't understand what the basic strategies were to the game. And so you kind of can be frustrated. So we thought today we'd take a couple of these long campaigns, dissect them a little bit, and give you an idea of how to approach strategy both from the Union and Confederate side uh, so that if you decide to play them, you'll have an idea what to do. Uh, Tebow's uh, favorite and one of my favorites, quite frankly, is the On to Richmond campaign. Uh, we talked to Ed and Chris and uh, Joe this morning about the fact that uh, that's in the works next thing down the pipeline. So it's going to be in reprint in the not so distant future. So I, I figure I'd turn it over to Tebow and talk a little bit about On to Richmond. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm very, uh, very, I'm glad I've been invited to. To, to be a speaker on this uh, instructional session. session. Um, well, so I'm going to, to, to speak a little about uh, Onto Richmond, uh, which is um, uh, one of the game of the great campaign games uh, that is uh, really hard to find on the second market or uh, uh, even mint, it's impossible to find it. It's very expensive. I'm not sure about why uh, it's, it was the case, maybe because it was one of the last games uh, published by uh, Avalon Hill, but uh, no, not a lot of people playing uh, great campaigns had the, the, um, the chance to, to play this game, which is, as uh, Ken said, is for me uh, one of the best, uh, uh, if not the best game of the, of the series. So uh, it has a... Um, Several peculiarities. Sorry, my cat is invading my uh, peninsula. <laughs> <Personal peninsula. laughs> um, so it has uh, several uh, peculiarities. I'm going to to speak uh, to tell you about. Um, first, uh, uh, as far as I know, it's the first game where uh, one side, uh, which is uh, the Union side, has uh, the uh, possibility to use uh, to choose several setups for the campaign game. Uh, in fact, there is uh, the historical uh, uh, landing site of uh, General uh, McClellan, uh, which is uh, the one on the peninsula from uh, Fort Monroe, where the Union uh, had his uh, 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 its fleet. And uh, But you, you can also choose three other uh, landing sites, uh, which wasn't uh, chosen uh, historically, but uh, which ha have been um, um, uh, in uh, McClellan's mind uh, probable uh, pro uh, alter for uh, an alternative uh, invasion of the Virginia. All right, so I'm going to share my screen to show you uh, the new map uh, of the module, uh, which is about to be issued, uh, I think, maybe in two years. That's what... Uh, Ed said uh, on the previous uh, instruction. Uh, do you confirm, uh, Ken? Yep, I think I think that's when they're talking about. You never okay. know. Okay. So. okay. so let's see. Uh, all right. So I hope you will be able to see my screen. Do you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to. I have to. I have a small screen. So, so here is the new map uh, of Onto Richmond with uh, the Peninsula campaign. Uh, so, uh, uh, the difference with all the other games uh, in the series is that you can choose either this place here, uh, where you can see. I'm going to zoom on uh, uh, on the Union Coast. Core. You can see uh, Keys and uh, Heinzelman core here. Uh, we are uh, at the southeast of uh, Richmond, um, just at the entrance of the James River, and just right of the, the place where I am. You can see here Yorktown. This is the this is the entrance of the York River and Gloucester Points. 
um, and here is the entrance of the James River. All right. So we are uh, we are not far from the Atlantic coast and uh, uh, east towards uh, you have a one day walk to Fort Monroe, where the Union has all its logistics. All right. Now, this is the um, just to, to to show you if I, I, I can't zoom more. Uh, zoom out more but uh, richmond is here all right so there is a there is a certain distance to 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 go for the union to get to richmond all right and petersburg is uh, just down richmond obviously here all right uh so the three alternative uh, landing sites are just uh, north of the york river i'm going to take a uh, heinzelman to show you here next to the Severn river so uh, it's an alternative uh, landing site. Uh, the second one is, uh, let me see, is uh, here on the Rappahannock River. And the last one is on the Rappahannock River as well, but very much more to the north in Tappahannock. So this place um, is my favorite for the invasion because, uh, in fact, you are uh, the closest to Richmond, which is here, and um, and you don't have a, well, you have several opportunities to to try and flank the the CSA uh, army, Confederate army. All right. So um, these uh, three options. Um, uh, and the historical one, which is uh, this one, um, provide uh, provide uh, real different games uh, each time, and uh, the Confederate setup is different uh, uh, according to what uh, what the Union chose uh, as a landing site. Um, so uh, this is the first peculiar peculiarity of this uh, this game: the fact that. Uh, you can choose uh, different landing sites. And uh, then if you want to get the big picture, I'm going to show you. Uh, it's a player ad that I uh, I made for the for the game. Uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, MMP will use it, but uh, whatever. Uh, so uh, this can show you everything that happens off map. Uh, we have several things uh, happening off map. Um, my opinion on all the campaign games uh, I've all played uh, in this series is that uh, usually off-map boxes don't really work or aren't worth uh, the, the time we spent on it because uh, it's, uh, it's usually here for historical re reason, but uh, uh, it doesn't add a lot of stuff uh, on the game, or the fun of the game. This is my own opinion. <laughs> I share it to you. But in this game, this um, the off map box are very important and uh, strategical to uh, it's a, you have a real strategic decision to take uh, to uh, in um, managing and using uh, these boxes. So uh, take a closer look. You can see that uh, the two on to Richmond map are in the center here, in the center of uh, of my um, graphics. Uh, with the north and the south map, and around them you have a box um, uh, for Fredericksburg, where the McDowell's Corps is uh, uh, sitting and waiting. Uh, you have uh, the Rappahannock district on the left. Here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the same with others. I'm I'm not seeing the off map box. All I'm seeing is the oh, original sorry. map. Okay, thank you. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, how do I change this? Uh, all right, so change of windows. Uh, yep, here, here, here we are. Sorry. <laughs> all right. That's so good. now you can see. Uh, yes, thanks, thanks, Ken. Um, so the onto Richmond map is uh, at the center, and uh, it's the green uh, rectangle rectangles in the middle all right so this is the 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 map uh, the normal map of the game and um so i'm going to use this to show you and move it okay and uh all just above you have a box which is uh, the frederick uh, district fredericksburg district where uh, mcdowell is waiting with his army uh 
here you've got the Rappahannock, uh, which is uh, next to Fredericksburg, and the valley, uh, the Shenandoah Valley, where Jackson uh, is um, is uh, is trying to 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 uh, how how can I say uh, to fix uh, Mac McDowell's troops army uh, McDowell score in Fredericksburg so uh, they can't go uh, and join uh, McClellan to 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 go uh, on to Richmond um, then you have a, a box for the Baltimore uh, DC reinforcements the, you have on the left the same box for the Richmond reinforcement South Carolina uh, reinforcements and special reinforcement if North Carolina is um, is emptied uh, well, in fact, uh, once every reinforcement from South Carolina arrives, uh, North Carolina reinforcements are become available. Uh, we have two big boxes here to figure uh, Fort Monroe and Norfolk, uh, a box for the Atlantic Coast and Birdside Corps, the, the ninth corps of the Union uh, Army of the Potomac, and a box for uh, the DC reinforcements. All right, so uh, now uh, all uh, of this game is uh, for the Union to get as many troops as possible, as closest as possible from Richmond, and if possible to crush uh, Johnson, then maybe uh, Lee's army. This is uh, quite simple, but uh, it's it's not that simple to play and to uh, to achieve. And uh, Ken will and also Steve, hi Steve, uh, which is the, uh, who is listening to us, uh, know uh, that it's quite difficult. So uh, we I've played both guys and uh, they won uh, both, uh, and it was well deserved. Okay, so uh, in this game, uh, you have to bring uh, the much uh, uh, the more the more more troops on the on the main theater uh, to be uh, to be, be to have the biggest army and crush uh, uh, the confederate army um what is a state here is uh, in fact uh, scoring the counties each seven turns uh, a strategical uh, sorry i'm going to be back to the uh, to change my window here we go Okay, so we are back on the main map, and on the main map, uh, you will see that uh, you can see the the red dotted lines, uh, which uh, defines the county limits, and uh, uh, the county limits. Uh, I've made also a little uh, ad here. I'm gonna try to share it to you uh, as well. So uh, the uh, score uh, victory points the Union has to occupy all of these uh, uh, counties, and uh, only so, so, some counties uh, provide um, victory points. The closest to Richmond, the counties are uh, the more victory points you earn, uh, basically. Right, but uh, to get there, the Union has to get his supply either from the place where he begins his uh, offensive. So it's either here in the north, uh, the Essex, Essex County, and uh, or uh, the Peninsula or uh, Middlesex and Gloucester County. And he will have to open both one or both uh, rivers, York River here, the main one, and the James River. All right. The problem with the James River is that it's uh, guarded by fo uh, Norfolk Fort, and um, uh, as long as the uh, Union uh, hasn't uh, stormed uh, and taken uh, Norfolk, he, uh, the Union cannot uh, enter the James River. Uh, so uh, sometimes he will, uh, he will take Norfolk and open the James, and sometimes he won't. So he will have. He will have to rely on the, his um, uh, main uh, supply line uh, on the York River. Okay, uh, so um, uh, as you know, we are in uh, 1862. So uh, we are uh, the activation of uh, the leaders is uh, different from the the games uh, you can know, just like uh, Stonewall or Jackson Way too. Uh, where uh, basically a um, uh, um, confederate division moves with a uh, one uh, six die roll plus one and uh, uh, the confederate leaders provide a plus two 
uh, whereas uh, the union uh, has a no uh, bonus for a division march and a plus one only for core uh, leader on march. In this game, uh, as we are uh, early in the war, uh, the division uh, confederate division don't have uh, the plus one. They, they just have a minimal move uh, movement point of two, even if they roll a one. But if they roll a six, they will go. They will have to spend only six and not uh, six plus one. Uh, the union uh, division infantry divisions also move with one die, but with no minimum minimum of one. In fact, and uh, the uh, common uh, core leader uh, from the uh, uh, Confederate Army provide a plus one instead of a plus two uh, later, and uh, the um, uh, core leader uh, from the Union don't provide any bonus. They just uh, they just uh, give a minus uh, sorry uh, just a two minimal uh, movement point for the division uh, who which are activated by, by their command. Right, so the armies uh, move slowly, uh, more slow than slower, sorry, uh, than um, later during the war, and uh, we, you, each uh, side will have to cope with that. There is one interesting rule uh, to uh, prevent the Union uh, player to be more aggressive than historically, uh, which isn't difficult because we all know that uh, General McClellan was very strong not to attack. So uh, there is a quite clever rule. Uh, I don't know who designed it, if it's, it is Joe or uh, Ed, uh, to, to uh, just to figure uh, the, uh, the slowness and uh, the lack of aggressivity of McLennan. So when you're rolling for initiative, as usual, uh, the Confederate player wins ties. But when the Union uh, wins the initiative, if it wins with a six, he can move everything he wants. And he uh, so a six uh, against a one, a six one, six two, six three, six four, or six five, uh, he can move everything he wants. But if he rolls a five, he can move only two divisions from the same core activated by a leader. And uh, if he roll, wins the initiative with a two, with a three, or with a four, which is so uh, one uh, uh, fifty percent chance uh, he can move only one unit at a time. So you can see that when you want to advance with this initiative um, uh, rule, uh, you 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 will likely move just one division uh, as a spearhead of your of your army, and it can be crushed. Uh, quite easily by the Confederate player and surrounded before the rest of the corps, even not the army, but the rest of the corps can follow it. So you have to be very careful as a Union player when you want to advance, you will be very slow. And this rule, in my opinion, um, portrays uh, quite rea realistically uh, the um, McClellan, uh, how can we say? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, pusillanimity, uh, do you have the word in English, Ken? How about the slows? We just say the slows. Yeah, the slows, right? Okay. So every, every uh, once said, you have when we you will take a look at the uh, the Union Army, you will see that it's one of the most beautiful army you will ever uh, uh, command in a great campaign games. Uh, the core are the divisions are almost all above eighteen or nineteen manpower. They have lots of guns. Uh, the leaders are very poor to launch assault, but your army is really uh, great. So uh, it's quite frustrating uh, in the in the meantime, frustrating and uh, very uh, uh, re rewarding to to, to command uh, such an army. And for the south, well, uh, the army is a uh, is quite a pretty one, but you will probably have uh, two uh, bad, let's say, uh, bad generals. Uh, who are um, uh, Magruder, General Magruder, and the other uh, is uh, Smith, Smith Corps. Uh, yeah, I think it's Smith, right. Uh, and uh, I think the, we won't see again uh, them again during the war. Um, so uh, there is, uh, uh, as you as you saw, uh, the rivers are very important in this uh, and present in this campaign. You have you have the York River and the um, and the James River, and uh, the control of both 
sorry, I'm sharing the wrong string. So, okay. You here for the good one. Nope. This one. Nope. Excuse me. Just uh, setting. I lost my uh, window. All right. Here. Okay. So. Um, uh, okay. Here we go. Um, there is a long. It's a long way to from the to to go throughout the country and all the small counties of the peninsula to Richmond here, but uh, the Union has the ability to use a naval movement, naval transport. Uh, so he's using boats to uh, to cruise on the on the York and the James River, so he can bring a division one at a time. Uh, uh, more quickly uh, next to the battlefield, next to the uh, surroundings of Richmond. So usually, uh, once the York is open by uh, crushing both, uh, show you uh, both uh, Yorktown here and uh, Cramp, uh, not Cramp, uh, Gloucester Point here. Once the river is open, uh, the Union can move all the way up to here, which is White House Landing. So you can see the small uh, brown. Uh, uh, brown pontoons here, uh, they are landing sites. So you can embark and disembark in these X's. Uh, let me take something to show you up here, all right? Here, uh, and um, so uh, the Union can, uh, can, can disembark uh, units here, and we are really not far from, from Richmond. Uh, when you will get the, this game, I, I hope as soon as possible, uh, you will uh, the game will be used. This map will be used both for onto Richmond 62 campaign, but also for Grand Takes Command the 64 campaign. And um, uh, obviously, the Richmond defenses are very different from six, from 62 to 64. So in this module, Alberto did a great great job, and he um, he erased all he le he left only the um, all the redoubt axes that are in 62, all right? But when you will have the game uh, physically, you will, you will also have an, a, second, um, a second crown uh, fence of uh, readout here, uh, which were built in 64, all right? So uh, Richmond as itself is a, is a very, uh, you know, it's a city, a city type terrain X, where uh, the artillery doesn't uh, isn't taken into account. So when you're fighting uh, within the city of Richmond, it's uh, all on your dice and your uh, tactical modifier uh, from your leaders, and it can be quite bloody, in fact. So the city of Richmond is here; it's the capital. And uh, um, as soon as uh, the Union gets close to Richmond, he can earn victory points just by having a demoralized infantry division um, uh, close uh, next to Richmond, just here, for instance, or here. And uh, of course, if he occupies the country seat here, uh, at the end of a strategic cycle, he will score lots of VPs. Believe me. So <laughs> I'm just uh, showing you a close look on the VPs uh, again uh, here up. Gonna try to be uh, quicker than before. All right, here we go. Yep. Okay, so uh, you can see on this uh, on this map that here in Richmond you can score Henrico's County, which is a Richmond County, um, 50, 50 victory points in the light blue. It's uh, each uh, and every seven turn strategic cycle where you control the county, you, you score 50 points and you can score another 100 points at the end of the game, which is the dark blue uh, uh, box, which show you that. So all the, the rest of the map uh, um, doesn't provide uh, any uh, victory point except for uh, De Windy County, which is uh, uh, Petersburg, and uh, Chesterfield County. In fact, Chesterfield doesn't have a county seat 
uh, as per se. It's uh, Drury's Bluff Battery, uh, which is presented by the small uh, red star just here, uh, just to show that if you control uh, Drury's Bluff Battery, in fact, you're controlling uh, this part of the county, right? So it, uh, it will be uh, very hard for the union to go and score uh, lots of points uh, until he gets close to Richmond. The first point he will get will probably be the one from Gloucester Point or uh, York, uh, Yorktown, uh, Yorktown, uh, which is the York country, county seat. And you see that it's two victory points per seven turns. So <laughs> uh, to get to the 106 point, which ensure a minor uh, union uh, victory, uh, you will have uh, you will have to go to get many uh, many victory points uh, uh, probably Chesterfield or, or Hanover Junction uh, give you another five victory points. So uh, you have to know that in 62 and in this game the victory points coming from the uh, the losses uh, from the combat are worth only one victory point uh, per loss per point. So it's the same for you, the Union and the um, Confederate Army. Uh, so you, you can see that uh, 20, uh, tw uh, 25 uh, victory points for Jesterfield County is a difference of 25 losses uh, be between uh, your losses and your uh, opponent's losses. So they, they will wait probably uh, for the victory, but uh, until uh, you, you, you get the, the County victory points, uh, uh, well, county victory points can, can re, will be the game changer, all right? More than the losses. Okay, so uh, what can I say uh, more uh, about uh, this opus? Uh, I don't say I don't know if we use uh, the term opus in English. Uh, this game. Um, uh, well, uh, I think I'm. Um, yeah, I, I could speak uh, about the gunboats and their support, but uh, that will be really detailed, uh, uh, too, 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 too much detail, uh, I think. Uh, maybe I can just have a word about uh, uh, the, uh, the importance of Norfolk. So I will get back to the, uh, to the main, uh, where is it? It was here, all right, get it up here and here. Okay, so Norfolk is very important uh, in this game because uh, it's, um, uh, it guards the entry of the James River. Uh, the James River, uh, if opened, uh, provides to the Union Army uh, lots of opportunities to attack uh, from the south, Petersburg in the middle, Chesterfield County, or even from the west, but with uh, bringing uh, the siege artillery marker on a depot uh, next to Richmond. So it's very important. How to take Norfolk? In fact, every, each and every seven turn, uh, except for the first one, uh, you, can, you can try to launch an assault provided, provided you, uh, the Union Command is active. Yes, we have a posture for the Union, active and passive. And just like in Atlanta is ours, the Union can really be um, offensive uh, when uh, they are active. When they are passive, they won't do many things much during uh, seven days. And being active give them give the, the Union the opportunity to launch an attack on Fort Monroe, an assault on, on Fort Monroe. And you only take the ratio plus several bonuses uh, linked to the presence of the uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, t -t 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 the USS monitor. And uh, you, you, uh, the union has to uh, get a plus four result on the combat table. To, uh, so that, that, that will be a tough choice for the union army to, 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 to choose whether to uh, pile some division in Fort Monroe uh, to launch uh, later an attack on Norfolk or to use these divisions on the main map to crush uh, Lee's or Johnson, uh, Johnson's army. And that's the reason why when I am playing this campaign with a new player, I usually give him the Confederate army, uh, Confederate side, because it's you have less uh, a less huge strategy and tough choices to do uh, um, than the Union uh, player, which has to carefully plan uh, every uh, every action and strategy he's going to take uh, in this game. 
So um, usually, uh, but, well, beginning with the south rather than the north, but it's really uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, really fun to play and very uh, it's it's very interesting to be the union because uh, because of the this mind uh, um, brainstorm you have to do to to, to prepare your strategy. Uh, the 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 Confederate side will uh, likely uh, more react to the union moves than. Uh, that, that doesn't mean he, he, there is no strategy for the South, but uh, they will uh, depend on, uh, on on the union choices. Okay, so uh, I think I, I've said uh, already uh, everything I wanted to say about this game, but uh, I probably uh, forgot things. Now I propose to take, take some questions if some of you uh, have questions about this game. Well, I don't have a question, Thibaut, but I, I will have a comment. I, I did play this against you in the spring, and you were uh, nice enough to give me the Confederates, and it was a, really a excellent time. One of the things I found about the game is you end up using the entire map. Uh, there's, there's several. You've got McDowell coming in from the north, and you've got the main Union Army coming in from the east, and you've got potentially uh, troops coming up from Norfolk and... Uh, and, the, and the Confederates are getting troops from all different places. You're getting uh, Stonewall Jackson can come in from the valley, et cetera. And it's a very fluid yeah. battle around the whole map board, especially once the Union clears the way up the James or up the York River, because then they have amphibious unit movement. And as the Confederates, you have to anticipate the fact that they're going to scoop around behind you and land behind you, and you have to be ready for that. So I, I had a great time playing it. Uh, Tebow is a great teacher. And I would recommend it pretty much for anybody um, if you have it already. And hopefully within the next couple of years, you'll get a chance to buy it again uh, and, and a chance to play it. So thank you very much, T-Boy. I really appreciate it. Um, I think we, get, we, probably sh we probably should move on. Uh, maybe if people have more questions, they can wait till the end because I know we're, we're moving on pretty soon. I want to yeah. tell you a little okay. bit about my presentation here. Yeah. Um, and... Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen and see if it works for you now. Okay. Okay, is everybody seeing uh, a PowerPoint presentation now, right? Thibaut, can you see that? Yes, I, I, I'm charging, but it, uh, it's uh, charging for the moment. Yes, I we can see it. Mm. Okay, good. So what I want to talk about, uh, I'm here to talk about Long Roads to Gettysburg, which is my mm. baby. I've been working on this particular game for probably 20 years. Uh, I started off getting a Long Rose to Antietam and then quickly decided I really wanted to take on this Long Rose to Gettysburg project. And I uh, want to talk about kind of what I was trying to do with the game, uh, some of the rules we implemented to implement that, and then really focus on the strategies you can have as the Confederates, as well as the counter strategies and the priorities for the Union. So let me just get into this, hopefully. So uh, what I was trying to do with this game, I love the Rose to Gettysburg campaign game, but I thought it lacked certain things simply because it was somewhat limited. Uh, because the big thing is it didn't really cover the entire campaign. It only covered the campaign once Lee actually gets into Pennsylvania. Uh, it didn't cover the entire campaign leading up to that from when he broke cam uh, camp down in uh, Fredericksburg. Because this is the, the map of the Long Rose to Gettysburg. And where the AMV starts is all the way down here next to Frederick. And of course, they end up in Gettysburg, have forces all the way to Harrisburg. So they end up using pretty much this entire map board during the game. And so one of my objectives was, hey, can we recreate this entire campaign using all the maps from Stonewall Jackson's way? Here come the rebels and also uh, roads to Gettysburg. So that's one objective I had. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was try to factor in or have something in the game that allowed uh, you to win the game the way Lee intended to win the game. Uh, his intent, if you read uh, historical accounts, was not simply to raid into Pennsylvania and pick up a bunch of victory points. His really intent was to force the Union out from behind his prepared lines down next to Frederick and, and attack the Army of the Potomac in one last grand battle. And that's so when you think about what happened at Gettysburg, that's what he was really trying to do, really trying to defeat the Army of the Potomac. It failed, 
but I thought in order to really simulate the game, you needed some way in order by which somebody could actually win the game simply by defeating the Army of the Potomac. The other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to introduce the whole variety of historical objections and ways to win. So there's not a single way to win this game, and I'm going to talk about different ways you can win the game as the Confederacy. Instead, you have four or five different options you can kind of pursue to win this game, all based upon historical objectives. And so that's one of the things I wanted to do, give you different alternatives so you weren't just focused and had to do it, had to play the game one way. Uh, I wanted to, in the idea of having a, an arbitrary end date, the idea, oh, well, it reaches June 17th and the game's over. Well, is that really the end of the campaign? Well, the end of the campaign really occurred when Lee recrossed the uh, uh, Potomac River. And so I wanted to have a game that covered the entire campaign. It was ended by some historical mechanism, uh, at least for the long campaign that we came up with. Uh, the other thing we need to do is getting the proper pace and flow of the game historically. And that turned out to be the most difficult thing is to get the game to flow historically. So the Confederates, yes, they could get up north, but they couldn't race too much out in front of the, the Union forces. And also that there were historical mechanisms to make sure to actually get them back across the Potomac. You know, could they just go up in Pennsylvania and stay there forever and ever and ever? Or was there some things that were occurring historically that really pushed them to come back into Pennsylvania? So that's another thing I tried to do. Uh, so tried to measure the speed of Lee's advance and get them back into Virginia. And also finally make the whole thing playable. And one of the things we did have to, we ended up now having two basic two scenarios. One is a long scenario, which does cover the entire campaign from when Lee gets over the Potomac all the way until when Lee comes back across the Potomac. But we also came, came up with a high water, a high, high tide, uh, which it is, does end on a arbitrary date, but it really simulates Lee's movement into Pennsylvania or into Maryland or across the Potomac uh, up to about Jan July 7th. And why that was important, because that's it makes the game more playable. Uh, it's a game that you can play in a long weekend as opposed to, you know, two or three long weekends. So that was the design objectives and the rules we came up with. And I really have been developing this whole game with Dave Cross over the years. And we've been going back and forth of it. Uh, and we came up with an army demoralization. And that's a way to win the game simply by defeating the Army of the Potomac or the Army of Northern Virginia, because either side can win by demoralizing the other side's army. Uh, and it's based upon the number of casualties you cause plus the number of routed units. Uh, we came up with a whole list of different victory points and this victory objectives, a whole bunch of different ways you can get uh, victory points. Uh, had to come up with a supply system and that's one of the systems we had to develop to basically regulate Lee's ability to move. Because if you didn't have any need to resupply the army, then Lee could simply outpace the army of the Potomac, north of the Potomac and up into Pennsylvania. So we need to have some limitation on that. The supply system was all about that. And understanding the supply system, especially if you're going to evade all the way up into Pennsylvania, really is crucial both for the Confederacy and the the Union. Uh, we also came up with an operational passive system similar to the systems you see in On to Richmond and Atlanta is ours, et cetera. But what we tried to do that with that was create some historical drivers by which uh, basically forces both armies to take a few days and rest and resupply. So you, in order to gather supply, you have to go passive and if, you, if both parties go passive, nothing happens for the day and you simply skip to the next turn. It, and so it made it so the game flowed. So it didn't move too quickly ahead of its historical actual time frame. Uh, because when we initially played the game, Lee could get up into Pennsylvania uh, by the end of early in June. And that just didn't make too much sense historically. Um, and we introduced naval rules to enable the union to get out ahead of the uh, confederacy so they didn't have an easy time capturing baltimore or or, or washington dc uh, we had to come up with a system by which to transfer command from hooker who was 
in charge of the Army of the Potomac at the beginning of the campaign. And then, of course, it was eventually transferred to Meade and there's a whole system for doing that and reorganizing the Army. And then we had to come up with a system by which to give the Army of the Potomac, which starts out the entire campaign relatively weak, the ability to eventually get strong enough so it could actually kick Lee out of Pennsylvania and Maryland. And the way it did historically and the way we simulate in the game is allowing a lot of these garrison forces the Union had north of the Potomac guarding the B&O, guarding Baltimore, et cetera, to eventually attach onto the Army of the Potomac once Meade takes command. And that gives the Army of the Potomac the oomph that they can then go after the Army of Northern Virginia and eventually kick it out, especially combined with the supply system. So that's what we were trying to do, some of the rules we developed to, uh, to do it. And let me now kind of go into the different ways you can win this game as the Confederate. And I think there are four basic strategies, four basic ways you can focus on. Number one, uh, you can move to simply capture DC or Alexandria. And that's a real possibility in the game. The first three turns in the game allow Lee to move out to Culpeper as he did historically. And if the Army of the Potomac doesn't react properly, then the Lee can simply take the route he took in 1862, drive right up the Orange and Alexandria Railroad, capture Alexandria, potentially get across into uh, Washington, D.C., and actually capture Washington, D.C. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's still obviously a threat. And if you're able to get into Washington, D.C., you automatically win the game. So that's one way to win the game. Uh, a second path to victory is you can take that same route from Culpeper, but instead of moving up the Orange Alexandria, move toward the, this is kind of the 1862 Antietam crossing point for Lee. He crossed upriver at uh, Point of Rocks, okay? And then instead of going to Harper's Ferry, instead turn to the east and threaten Baltimore or threatening to cut the, the rail line between Baltimore and DC or actually threatening DC itself. Uh, and that is a very realistic strategy. If the Union doesn't pay attention and get back quickly enough to prevent that, and once you get across the Potomac and you have a significant force across the Potomac, the army, the, the Union Army has difficulty because they've got to protect the rail lines, they've got to protect DC, they've got to protect Baltimore, and it's difficult for them to protect all three objectives. So that's a real way of winning the game uh, in this uh, LRTG. Another way is the historical uh, path that Lee took, and that's it, to invade Western Maryland and Pennsylvania. And there are really two paths to doing this. Uh, the first is to take uh, a path through Loudoun County and cross the Potomac between um, uh, east of Harper's Ferry, okay? and then come up through Frederick and come up east of the, the Catoctin Mountains over here. Okay. The other path, which was the historic, that was more of the 1862 path. The 1863 path, though, was Lee took, was moving into the Shenandoah Valley and up through across the Potomac above Harper's Ferry and then up into the Cumberland Valley and all the way up toward Harrisburg. Okay. And that's a way to win the game. But this is a, a long path to victory. Uh, if you try to capture D.C., you're successful. It's a very quick victory. If you get on into Baltimore, cut the D.C. and Baltimore rail line, you're going to win the game very quickly. But in order to be able to win the game simply by invading Pennsylvania and Maryland, uh, you're going to have to gather a lot of victory points. You're going to have to levy a lot of towns. You may potentially have to capture Harrisburg or get over here in York uh, or over on the Susquehanna River into Columbia and burn the bridge like they did historically. But it's a long path to victory uh, if you take that route. Uh, and the fifth way, the fourth way you can win this game, and this is one that I think uh, we've really introduced in the game, I think it's a great dynamic, is you can defeat the Army of the Potomac. If you can get the Army of the Potomac isolated and you can fall on it quickly and cause a bunch of casualties and get a, a bunch of its divisions and corps routed, you can simply cause a panic, cause a rout, and just by doing that, you can win the game. And where the, it's an interesting dynamic in the game is, is if all you try to do is defeat the Army of the Potomac, you're not going to do it. If you just march across the, the Rappahannock River and try to talk to the Army of the Potomac, you're not going to do that. The way you can do it, though, is if you get the Army of the Potomac so spread out trying to protect 
uh, against all these other potential ways you can win the game, then you can fall upon it and quickly defeat it in, in a battle. And so that's a very realistic way that, to win the game. Probably half the games we've been playing is with either the Army of the Potomac or the Army of Northern Virginia routed, uh, and that's the, game, the way the games are decided. So, so how do you go about uh, some kind of – how do you go about these strategies very quickly? Well, if you want to capture D.C. or Alexandria, it's really kind of hell for leather. You get on the or, 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 Orange-Alexandria Railroad. You try to use your cavalry to delay the AOP coming north uh, through along the Telegraph Road. And then you simply, if they do get a couple core on the Orange and Alexandria, you just overwhelm them and race into Alexandria or Pennsylvania. And is, that's a very difficult thing to do, especially with the naval rules, because the Union can get some core back into to, to D.C. But what it often presents you is the AOP is trying to get some core out in front of you to protect itself uh, and protect DC, and they're too strung out. They've got two or three core up there. You fall on it with the entire Army of the Potomac, and you win, end up winning the game not by capturing DC, which would maybe your initial objective, but instead simply routing the uh, Army of the Potomac uh, in the Manassas area somewhere in there. Uh, uh, you could also get up into to the, uh, Virginia, et cetera. So that's a real possibility. So that's one way to victory. Uh, another thing, if you want to take go the Baltimore route, uh, you've got to be a little bit more disciplined there. Uh, one of the things you – cavalry is incredibly important in this game, both the use, the use of the Confederate cavalry as well as the use of the Union cavalry trying to counter the Confederate cavalry. And one of the important things that Stuart can do is to get up and get on the fords and basically garrison the fords across the Potomac so when the Army of Northern Virginia comes up, they have a free path across the Potomac. Because one of the things the Union can do, if they can get enough garrison forces out here, they can make it difficult for Lee to cross the Potomac. And Stuart can, can help uh, guard the fords, garrison them, and lead the way for the Army of Northern Virginia to get across the Potomac. Uh, and once you get across the Army of the Potomac, then you've got the opportunity to threaten Baltimore, threaten cutting the rail line, or threatening D.C., and it becomes difficult for the Union to react to all three. Um, but once again, it's, it's, it's kind of hell for leather. You don't really worry too much about the supply rules, et cetera. You're just trying to outrace the Army of the Potomac, get into Baltimore before they can get their forces back to protect it. Okay. Now, I talked about this invasion of Western Maryland and Pennsylvania. If you're going to take that route, it's the longer route to victory. Uh, and if you're going to take that route, the first thing you're going to do is want to really carefully analyze this victory point table and all the ways you can collect victory points between when you leave Culpeper to when you get to Harrisburg. Because when if you stay west of the mountains, there are not a lot of ton of victory points out here. You can levy some towns, et cetera. In order to get enough victory points to win the game, you're eventually going to have to come east. You're going to have to capture Harrisburg or have to get into York, et cetera, uh, and get some of the victory points you get in to, to going farther east on the map board. So, But you really have to analyze that to figure out how you're going to amass the 160 victory points to actually win the game. Uh, you really need to understand the supply rules because this is going to be a longer campaign. You're going to have to figure out where you're going to get the supplies through levees and capture depots and foraging. Uh, and that's going to be a very important part of the game is understanding your supplies so you can supply your forces once they get into Pennsylvania. Uh, once again, you can use Stuart to rush ahead to help you get across the Potomac. Uh, and once Stuart is across the Potomac, Stuart can be very important in cutting the rail lines in behind the Army of the Potomac. Because if you can cut those rail lines with Stuart, it does two things. First of all, it cuts off the ability of the Union to use railroad movement to get out, because it's the main railroad that moves from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore and then up to uh, Pennsylvania. If you can cut those rail lines, then the Union can no longer use railroad movement and get out in front of you. And the other thing it does, it cuts the union's ability to easily resupply. And if you can do that, that will slow down the union forces because they're going to have to take some time to forage as well. So using Stuart can be very important in giving Lee the time and ability to collect all these victory points he needs 
if you're going to have an invasion of Maryland. Okay, and as I said, the the fourth best way perhaps to win the game is simply defeating the Army of the Potomac. Uh, in order to do that, you really have to understand these army demoralization rules, what causes an army to be demoralized, how much you have to demoralize it, et cetera. So you have to understand those rules very clearly. Uh, you have to focus on the ability to consolidate your forces. That's the great things about the great campaigns in the American Civil War series is it really has a great sense of the importance of the ability to consolidate your forces more quickly than the enemy. And so if you can get your army consolidated and fall upon a portion of the Army of the Potomac, uh, you can quickly end up routing it simply by routing away a number of the divisions, the corps, et cetera. So, uh, so you need to understand that the ability to consolidate, fall upon, uh, a portion of the army, uh, and potentially the best way to get in this position is to force the AOP into position where it has to stand its ground. I, all, I originally mentioned, I already mentioned, hey, if you're driving on Washington, the AOP has to get out in front of you. Even if it doesn't have all its forces up, it has to try to delay you getting into Washington. If you get them in that situation, then you've got the uh, ability to uh, force them into battle and potentially uh, rout them. Uh, and once you get them in that situation, you have to press the attack because once the individual divisions uh, undemoralize, you no longer have, you know, they're no longer counted as routing. So you have to get a number of different divisions all demoralized at the same time in order to uh, cause a, a union panic or rout and win the game by, by, attacking the union. Uh, so if you're the union, then what are your priorities? Okay, well, the, you don't really have a strategy. Your strategy is dictated by what the, you, the Confederates are gonna do. But your priorities are number one, you've gotta protect DC and Baltimore. Cause if they capture DC, capture Baltimore, they're gonna win the game. So you've gotta get back fast. You've gotta use your naval movement to get some forces back from Agia Creek to DC or Baltimore. Uh, You've got, if you can, to garrison some of these fords to slow the uh, or, or stop the Confederacy from advancing across the Potomac. Uh, so that's the number one priority. You got to protect DC and Baltimore. Okay. Uh, number two is you got to make sure you don't end up being routed. So you got to make sure that you don't put yourself in a situation where you can be isolated and have a, a, a routed battle and they win through that mechanism. You have to understand the demoralization rules. You have to have enough mutual support so you don't get yourself into too much trouble. Uh, and you always have to be looking at where the ANV is. Are they strung out or are they consolidated? If they're consolidated, then you really have to be focused on their ability to attack. If they're all strung out, then that may not, you may be able to string your own forces out because you're not under as much of a threat from an ANV attack. Uh, and once again, you need to avoid having portions of your army isolated, which can be wiped out and, and all by itself cause uh, an army route, okay? Uh, and then if you can do that, you can protect DC, you can keep the, a in, uh, the Army of the Potomac from being defeated in battle, then your third priority is to keep the Confederacy from getting enough victory points to win on points. And that's the longer route that you have to guard against uh, you need to make sure you keep your own supply and rail lines open so you can can supply your forces to keep their speed up as well as to get out in front of the A and V if you need to. You need to get forces into Harrisburg and York. Uh, a lot of games I play, people say, oh, I'll get some people up there eventually. Boom, boom, boom. Suddenly the rail line's cut and you, Harrisburg is cut. There's no way the Union can send reinforcements unless, unless they send uh uh, a rail, rail troops through Philadelphia, and that takes a long time. Uh, you've got to build up your army. You've got to use the rules that allow you to take these garrison forces and bulk up some of your core so you can have a, a, a bigger fighting force. Uh, and if you get a chance, if you can isolate a portion of the A and V, even if you can take on one division and get it into a battle and get it to fully fatigue, you basically take away the A and V's freedom of movement because once that one division is held up, then the rest of the army's got to come back and help it out or it's going to just leave that division to be overwhelmed by the Army of Potomac. So that's a strategy you can have to kind of slow them up. Uh, 
And eventually what you want to do is you want to cut off the Potomac or Shenandoah, the Potomac Fords or the Shenandoah Valley to base to, to restrict Lee's supply. There's some supply modifiers if you take uh, some of the towns along the, the Potomac. So, so those are the things you need to do in order to try to counter the Confederacy. Uh, so, but let's, let's talk now, go back to the Confederate strategies in the best Confederate strategies in my book of playing the game. And I think the easiest way and the best way to play this game is just to route the AOP. Get them in a situation where they have to defend and use your superior ability, especially early in the campaign, to overwhelm them, route them, and do exactly what Lee wanted to do, bring about that one last climactic battle that he thought if he could win, he could win the war. So really, there's a real path to victory here and probably the easiest one, I think, if you pursue that. Uh, number two, try to capture Baltimore, cut Baltimore, D.C. rail lines. Uh, get across the Potomac and then threaten Baltimore. Uh, it's difficult for the Union to defend against all three. That's a, a second best option. Uh, going through the Loudoun County route and up through Frederick and toward Gettysburg, if you're going to try to win by points, that's probably the best route. Uh, the uh, next the best route is to go through Shenan the Shenandoah Valley. Okay. Uh, but Interestingly, I, a lot, I've seen a lot of people play this game, and what most Confederate commanders do is they simply try to recreate history. Oh, Lee went through the Shenandoah Valley. That's what we're going to do. And so they march their, their forces up through the Shenandoah Valley and then up this way. They can do that, but it takes a while. And if you're all the way out here in the Shenandoah Valley, you're not doing anything to restrict the Army of the Potomac from chasing up after you. Uh, so it's, it's actually more difficult, in my opinion, to go that route as opposed to going straight across in, uh, uh, to the east of Harper's Ferry. But uh, you see most Confederate generals take that route uh, to victory. It's certainly a winnable route, but it's, it's a more difficult, a longer path to take. Um, and then finally, probably the toughest one is to actually capture D.C., there's a lot of garrison forces in D.C. There's a, a, a ring of fortresses around D.C., uh, not easy to do. But as I say, if you can threaten the capture of D.C., uh, you can force the AOP out in the open and you may very well be able to attack it and rout uh, the AOP. OK, um, so any questions? I, I probably should tell you as far as anybody's interested in playing the game, uh, the counters for the long roads to Gettysburg are actually included in the Roads to Gettysburg 2 uh, module. Uh, the rules are available on the Great uh, Great Campaigns of the American Civil War uh, site that you can get to, I believe, through the MMP uh, website, or you can simply email me and I'll send you the latest copy of the rules. Uh, there's also some um, handy dandy player aids. We've got a uh, player, a, a spreadsheet you can use to keep track of all the uh, the victory points, et cetera. It takes care of all the supply, et cetera. And uh, I have a number of map add-ons. If you look at the map, we have a map that's been added, added on to reflect the this rail line in the eastern Pennsylvania. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, uh, different um, player aids, et cetera, available for the game. Uh, they're available, I think, on the MMP website, or you can simply email to get them. So. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. Uh, just wanted to turn it back over to anybody. Do you have any questions for Tebow or myself about either the uh, on to Richmond or uh, the long roads to Gettysburg? Hearing none. Okay. Tebow? Uh, go ahead. This is Bruno. I just have a question for Tebow on the uh, onto Richmond campaign game. So I, I played with a fellow opponent nearby and we got 27 turns into the campaign game and it was, um, took 23 hours. So can you just give us an idea of how long, even with the lulls that might occur, uh, how long the full campaign game would last if it go to the end? On the Vassal, uh, Vassal is uh, much uh, more quick, it's much quicker because you know because of the automatic recovery uh, button and uh, and uh, all this stuff. Uh, 
uh, in face to face, I would say that it's about 32 hours gaming. 32 hours? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. In fact, yeah, you, you know, during the weeks, uh, the weeks when the union is passive, the, the terms would go very fast. Uh, but uh, once uh, when the union is active, the same as in Atlanta is the world, uh, the terms are very, very uh, much more, much longer than, uh, than when it's active. So yes, uh, it's uh, about between 32 and 36 hours gaming. Okay, just a, a follow up on the balance between land movement and, and the Navy, obviously with McCullum's restrictions on activation, um, uh, you know, the movement on the James and York rivers has to be key, but how much do you rely on moving the troops via the rivers? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I, uh, as far as when I play the Union, I'm using, uh, I'm using the level of movement on the rivers, uh, usually only to to send a big division uh, with the support of defensive support of gunboats to take a landing site in order to bring a, uh, to build a, a depot on it. And once it's full, I will bring it to uh, I will bring the siege artillery on it. Usually on the James River, uh, I'm trying to land uh, not far from uh, Marvin Hill. Uh, I can show you if you want. And and the fa uh, okay, so. Um... You know that uh, uh, the two, so to answer your question, um, uh, um, Bruno, it's just uh, these two X's which are worth, uh, on the York, it's White House landing. And uh, for the uh, uh, anecdotal uh, uh, anecdote, uh, there is the, uh, I think it's Lee's aunt uh, mentioned here, something like that. Um, and uh, once you bring your siege artillery, you have to, 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 to secure the dispatch station bridge to repair it, and uh, then your artillery will be available for the big battle in Richmond, and that will be a, a game breaker, I think. Uh, but it's uh, quite a long way, and you can do the same on the York, on the James River. On the James River, uh, usually I bring. Uh, so I will take Featherstone here. Uh, I bring uh, my depot here. Uh, on this uh, point, Madden's, uh, Madden's Mill here, and it's very easy to protect it because you can use as the Union these axes where you will get all uh, gunboat support and protect your de depot here, and your depot will be directly uh, within an Enrico County. So once uh, the siege artillery works, it will be uh, great, but it can take some time, and uh, this uh, strategy obviously uh, is. Um, uh, with for this strategy, you have to take the uh, Norfolk, right? And then the last one, uh, last option is to bring uh, uh, people in uh, Bermuda Hundred here to build a depot in Chesterfield. So your uh, objective will be to 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 try to take and keep uh, Drury's Bluff, which usually uh, the victory points you get by. Uh, Occupying uh, this siege of county, which isn't a siege, uh, once again, Drury's Bluff uh, will get you enough point to win the game. To win the game, uh, did I answer to your question, uh, Bruno? Yes, yeah, very interesting. L looking at the the naval possibilities. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm very sorry, guys. I didn't prepare. The, I was uh, ashamed when I saw uh, Ken's uh, presentation, uh, which was excellent, and I, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint. Next time, I will do it uh, uh, without any doubt, and uh, probably I will do it and then give it. Uh, uh, available on the on the Discord forum. Uh, I think you did a great job, Timo. I've really enjoyed it, learned a lot. For my next time, I'm going to play you. I'm going to use all these strategies that you've given me to actually beat you. Uh, Ken, you, you you gave me, um, uh, uh, now it's, uh, I want to play a long road to Gettysburg. <laughs> I okay. have never played for the moment. Good, so. good. I, I hope, hope that interests you. And if people are interested in that game, where there is a game going on right now. Uh, and uh, over in the long roads to Gettysburg room, mm. And it's kind of reaching a climactic moment. You've got the Army of the Potomac well up into Pennsylvania. They're threatening to capture York and Pennsylvania. They've got, but they've got their entire army very spread out. They've got a, a, a corps in Frederick, a corps in Gettysburg, and a corps threatening York. And it's a very interesting game if you want to watch in for that a little bit. 
Uh, and as far as the rest of the, the, uh, the convention goes, we're coming to close here. We have one more, though, important thing we're going to do at uh, 4 o'clock today. We're going to have our Mason-Dixon Cup. And we invite anybody that wants to come in and either get on the Southern or Northern team, uh, regardless of your experience level, we'll try to pit you up against a, a, a player of a similar experience to play a short scenario. I think we're going to either play South Mountain or Cedar Mountain and uh, see which team wins the most games and they'll take home the winter offensive Mason Dixon cup. So <laughs> yeah, unless we have any other questions, uh, thanks for listening in. I appreciate it. And uh, if you do play the long roads to Gettysburg and if you have any comments or questions, uh, I'm always available. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Thank, thank thanks so much, Tebow. Uh, thank you, Ken. And thank you everyone for being here. Yeah. Thank have you, a nice Tebow. day. Take care. You bet.